hello, Sid Roth here. Welcome to my world, where it's naturally supernatural. Doctors, molecular biologists say we are our DNA. Like it or not, we inherit traits and diseases from past generations, and there's nothing you can do about it. But my guest says, untrue, and we got proof. Next. Sid Roth has spent over 40 years researching the strange world of the supernatural. Join Sid for this edition of It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm here with Jared Nutt, and I have to tell you something. He's provoking me to jealousy at eight years of age. He gets caught up into heaven. I didn't even know who Jesus was until I was 30. What happened to you, Jared? Oh my goodness, what an amazing experience. I was caught up to heaven when I was eight years old. I was a voracious reader as a child and I always liked to read books. And one moment I found myself reading books in my bedroom and the next moment I'm standing in heaven. I'm standing in the third heaven and I can see the glory, it's tangible. I'm standing in a street it was a street of gold. The streets in heaven are paved with transparent gold. Well, I didn't know this when I was eight years of old. Of course. I didn't know. So, so I'm, I'm taking all of this experience into my life, into that moment, and I'm having this, this encounter with, with heaven. I hadn't yet encountered Jesus. He was letting me ease into the process, and I'm absorbing this as an eight-year-old. And as I look around this beautiful oasis of heaven, I see a tree. And this tree is, ex is split down two sides of a, of a river. Hmm. And I thought, that's phenomenal. I didn't have a paradigm for this when I was eight years you old. You hadn't read this in the Bible. I hadn't read this in the Bible. And, I, and I, later on, I learned in the Bible that Revelation 21, it talks about the tree of life coming down on both sides of the river. So as I'm taking this, this experience in, and I'm absorbing what's around me, the next moment I found myself standing in the throne room of heaven. Hmm. I'm surrounded by angels. As far as I could see, I'm surrounded by angels and they're singing, holy, 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 glory to God in the highest. And that's all I could hear and it was worship. And I just wanted with my little spirit to be able to participate, to take advantage of what I was being immersed in. Now, but as a young child, or actually any age, was there any fear going on in this amazing encounter you had? That's the beauty of all this. There was no fear. I knew exactly where I was, and I knew whose I was. And in that moment, as I'm standing in that throne room, it was perfect peace. It was perfect love. And it was just as scripture says, perfect love casts out all fear. There wasn't room for fear in the moment that I was in, and that didn't even cross my mind. But as I'm standing there, I'm wondering to myself, why, why am I here? Why am I looking at this amazing experience? And in that moment, I transferred to Jesus' lap, and I'm sitting in the lap of Jesus and he's smiling and he's looking at me and we're having great conversations. And this is the best part. We were having conversations that were well beyond my years. I was not intellectually at a place to understand mm -hmm. the conversations that I was having with Jesus, but what he was doing was preparing me. And he was instilling in me what I would need for my walk with Christ through him in my ministry. It was remarkable. Now, I, I've had an experience with so many people I've interviewed that have been to heaven that they don't remember everything. But throughout their life, it's as if not just that information, but much information was downloaded to them. And at strategic times, it's revealed to them. It's, have you found that to be true? I found that's exactly what's happening to me. That as I grow in my ministry, and as I grow in my faith in Christ, and I rely on Him, He's revealing to me the conversations that we had, and He's revealing to me the next steps for ministry. And it's glorious and it's remarkable that He's leading me by the hand one step at a time. And I don't ever have to feel like I'm coming from behind because it's His next step, and it's His next thing for me. Mm -hmm.
How'd that conversation with Jesus end, by the way? Oh, it's glorious. I remember it like it was yesterday. He brought out a bowl of fruit, and he set it on the table in front of me. And I, and I said, Jesus, what is that? And he looked at me and he said, this is the fruit of your life, and this will be the fruit of your ministry. He says, and no matter what you do, and no matter where you go, I will be with you, and I will never leave you. Jeb, there are people that needed to hear what you just said. Would you speak to them right now? Oh, it would be my pleasure. Jesus wants you to know that he will never leave you, that he will never forsake you. He's gentle, he's kind, and he's waiting for our yes. Will you say yes to Jesus today, and will you allow him to guide you, to take you by his hand, and to walk you into your destiny, into the path that he's called you into, the glorious person that you were created to be. Uh, Jerob, what is a deliverance minister? You are a deliverance minister. I am a deliverance minister by the grace of God. Deliverance ministers, they minister freedom. We deliver the perfect love of Jesus' heart to the individuals who desperately need it the most. People walk through life with traumas from their generational lineage, things that we've done in our own lives that have, that have caused trauma on our bodies, that have invited the enemy into our own lives. We administer God's perfect love to bring freedom to those individuals so that they can experience life to the fullest. Jerob has discovered the power in deliverance ministry, and then he discovered that science was agreeing with him. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. Prayer is an essential part to access every one of God's promises and blessings for your life. And praying daily in your God-given prayer language is so important in light of the times we are living. Introducing the brand new Sid Roth God Talk app. With this new prayer app, you will be able to set a reminder for when you want to pray. Let others know the time you spent in prayer each day for accountability. Take advantage of our worldwide prayer app community to lift your prayer requests to God. It includes includes a video teaching on how to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit and how to effectively pray the supernatural language that God has given you on a daily basis. Watch our TV archives and ISN, our It's Supernatural Network, to build your faith to believe God for the impossible. The app is free and available for iPhone, iPad, or Android devices. Just go to your device's app store and search for Sid Roth's God Talk. We now return to It's Supernatural. Jared Knott was downloaded when he was in heaven to be sharing what he's going to share with you right now. God knew you would be watching. What is the science of deliverance? This is remarkable. The science of deliverance is bringing what we've known for so long about the Bible and how to administer deliverance and what Jesus modeled, it's bringing that into a fresh new light where science in academia is beginning to now show that the Bible was true all along. Now, it's important that we understand the Bible doesn't need confirmation. And the thing that's so amazing is you have documentation yes from science, from reputable groups, yes. supporting what you just said. Absolutely. I'm not a scientist. I'm a deliverance minister. But God's given me the ability. I can read scientific documents. I can read medical journals. And we can understand what's happening in the scientific community. And God's given us the ability to partner that finally with what Scripture has known and taught us all along. Now, now, either people come to you or they get your CDs uh, for emotional uh, and spiritual type healing. What usually happens with them? They're surprised. So people are fascinated when they come into to our ministry to receive deliverance, spiritual healing, and they walk out with a bonus physical healing. There was one woman we ministered to who who 
during the course of her spiritual deliverance session, she just said, hey, would you mind if you just prayed over me for my back? Almost as if she expected the healing ministry mm -hmm. to be something different and separate. And as we prayed over her, she received healing in her back instantly. And she received her spiritual healing from the demonic oppression over her life as well. And she walked out a completely different person. Well, you know, science and the medical community, you've got an emotional problem, go see a psychiatrist. Right. You've got a physical problem uh, with your bones, go see an orthopedic. But you're saying Jesus didn't need to do that. Nowhere in Scripture do we see Jesus compartmentalize healing. All through Scripture, He would heal the sick and cast out the devils. He would heal the blind man so that the blind man could both see, but he was also set free from the demons in his life. And that's what we see in Scripture. Everywhere Jesus went, it wasn't one or the other. He didn't say this group of healing individuals goes over here and this group who needs demonization right. help goes over here. He dealt with all of them. What does science say about how our DNA reacts to our thoughts? This has to be one of the most incredible revelations that we've seen through science confirming the Bible. The Bible says to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. The word transformed is a literal physical transformation as much as it is a spiritual transformation. And we're seeing in science now where our thoughts change our physical DNA. Let me tell you about a study that was done out of Emory University. Mm. What this study performed or showed us was that when we took two separate Petri dishes, one dish was put in one space and another dish was put in another space and the group participants in space one was told to think positivity in the presence of the DNA. And in the other location, the group was told to think negativity, hatred, and so on. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the remarkable piece. See, Jesus says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And we saw in the presence of positivity, the DNA would lengthen and become at rest hmm. and peaceful. But in the other room, negativity and hatred at the DNA, the DNA would constrict and bind. And this is a picture of when the scripture said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I get it. Yes. That, that, that's an amazing revelation from science. Talk to us briefly about the science of forgiveness. I can tell you like it. I love forgiveness. <laughs> I can tell. I absolutely love forgiveness because forgiveness cracks open the door to healing and allows us to identify exactly where the problems are and where the enemy has come in and established a foothold. Stanford University has been conducting a a study over the last couple of decades that's concluding that forgiveness heals the body, it heals the mind, it heals the heart. So unforgiveness, holding unforgiveness in our bodies will lead to high blood pressure, heart disease, kidney failure, and other problems, sleeping disorders. And the science is showing that when we forgive, those things can be healed. And how much more in the name and power of Jesus. Amen. If science is finding that these, these are laws of the universe, so to speak, yeah. how much more when you have the creator of the universe behind this forgiveness? Amen. Amen. Even, even to the degree where the American Cancer Society prescribes forgiveness therapy for the treatment of cancer now. That's, they're not talking Christian. They're, not. they're just saying to get rid of cancer, forgive. Do they have evidence this has happened? They have evidence. That's, this is why it's prescribed as part of mm. the treatment, because it works. Okay, now real hot button. I'm just sorry we don't have the time to go into detail on all of these things. The science of fear. Yes. The world uses fear to control, to constrict the body of Christ, to constrict the people that Jesus would so desperately want to receive. But fear by itself is detrimental to the body. And did you know the American Journal of Managed Care published an article in which they said... That's a secular, this is a secular scientific organization. organization. And they published an article and they said fear the general anxiety disorder specifically, which is a derivative of fear, has no good treatments. 
Hmm. And what's wrong? I'm amazed that science would even say that. Absolutely. But this is confirming the Bible. See, Bible says that we're we not to have the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Fear is a spirit. We can't treat a spirit with a physical an aspirin won't help? Correct. <laughs> we can't give you Tylenol for fear. And so that's why we come in and we know we can see the science now. People who are living under chronic fear are living under high levels of cortisol, high blood pressure, sleep problems, kidney problems. But when we can come in and we remove the spirit of fear that's gripped their lives, that's held them under for so long, Jesus sets them free and they live in freedom, and they walk away sleeping normally. They walk away with normal blood pressure. They walk away with a- Do you see this? We see this. Jesus says perfect love drives out all fear. We rely solely on scripture. The science is simply confirming scripture. And when we encounter someone who is bound and gripped by fear, as so many people in our culture are right now, we have the tools and resources to speak to the offending spirit, in this case fear, and we have the authority and the power that Jesus gave the disciples in Matthew 10, 1, to drive out that spirit of fear. And we declare healing, we declare restoration over the body, and we declare healing in abundance. What about the science of renewing one's mind. This is the science. Yeah. What, what do we learn? Yeah, we teach renewing the mind. Again, we, we, you know, we spoke that our right. thoughts absolutely impact every, every cell in our body. Oh, you know, after hearing this, I will never be able to look at renewing your mind in the Bible the same way. When I find out what is going on every time you renew your mind to the Word of God or proclaim scriptures, but go ahead. Think about it this way. So renewing your mind is changing the physical construct of your mind, but every one of the 75 trillion cells in your body. Philippians 4.8 is, is the formula. Scripture says, think on these things. Whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is excellent, whatsoever is admirable, think on these things. And that's how we focus our thoughts into purity. Now, you think this is spectacular, and it is. It's life, it's critical understanding that he brings from heaven. But this next one is the one that'll just blow you out of the water. The science of, it's a word I've never heard of, I have to tell you, mm -hmm. uh, epigenetics. What does that mean? Epigenetics is a word that means the, the study of the transfer of generational inheritance along the bloodline. It's talking about this. There's a science studying this you now? believe this. There's huh. a study in this. Now it's non-biblical, but science is discovering that there are tags, there's markers on our DNA that can be traced back generationally, that were placed there by our ancestors who experienced trauma or maybe opened a doorway to the enemy. And when that trauma occurred in, in our ancestors' lineage, it marked our DNA. And what science is saying is that it now transfers down the generational lineage. This mirrors up with scripture when it says the sins of the fathers will be visited to the third and to the fourth generations. But what we're seeing also is that the study of epigenetics has, has now discovered there are ways to remove those from a medical perspective. I'm talking about renew, removing them from a God perspective where we speak to the generational curses, we speak to the traumas, and we cause them to be reset at the DNA level, restoring the person back to the perfection God intended. But, but you know, this supernatural forgiveness, this supernatural deliverance, it's not going to take decades and millions of dollars to spend with doctors. It could be as soon as you make up your mind. It's so wonderful. Um, molecular biology held the belief we are our DNA. Nothing we can do, nothing we can do about it. You say, not true. That's right. 
we have the power of God within us to speak to DNA, to speak to the trauma that's in our DNA and to cause it to be reset and to cause those traumas to fall off and to no longer impact the children of God. When he prays or people listen to his teaching and they pray the prayers after him, uh, give me a shotgun of some of the things that are happening to people. Oh, absolutely. It's my honor. So we've seen individuals who have been cured and healed of cancer. One individual particularly comes to mind where we, uh, we prayed over his uh, cancer of his mouth and the cancer fell off. We prayed over another individual who was in a coma, who couldn't participate in deliverance on her own. We prayed over her generational lineage and the next day she woke up completely healed and fully restored. We prayed over another woman who was experiencing trauma in her stomach, undiagnosed, was unable to, uh, to, to receive freedom from the doctors, and we identified generationally that there were issues in her DNA. We prayed over her generational bloodline. We cast out the curses, and we saw absolute restoration and freedom to her life. The greatest proof will be when you pray prayers, when you sit under this teaching, and you see the same results. That's the bottom line. What about me? But the truth is, hundreds, if not thousands, have been sitting under this teaching and getting set free from things doctors said you can't be set free of. It's in your genes. You can't be. Jared, pray. Oh, it's my honor to pray. And even as I, as I speak into your lives, I'm seeing that there are individuals watching right now who are even identifying the generational trauma that's on your family lineage. And the Lord wants you to say that that's not yours to carry. That's not for you to carry any longer. And I want to speak to you right now that that generational trauma is about to fall off in the name of Jesus. And right now, I thank you, Lord, that everyone watching and listening is fearfully and wonderfully made. I declare over you what God's Word says, that you were created in God's likeness, that you were called to represent God's kingdom on this earth. I speak to the demonic entry points in your family lineage right now, and I close them, and I command all traumatic experiences to detach from your genetic code right now in the name of Jesus. I declare over you that you are not the result of your inherited genes, that you are not a flawed person by design. I declare that genetic infirmity is not God's plan for you. I speak truth into your DNA and into your life and into your spirit. You were created in the image of God. You were fearfully and wonderfully made for a purpose. I speak healing to your genetic code right now. I command all genetic infirmity to be removed instantly. I command all marks on your DNA that have attached themselves anywhere in your family lineage to the 10th generation generation and beyond to be removed and to leave your body now. And God, it is written that when we ask you for healing, we will receive. Therefore, I ask you, Lord, for a complete and thorough reset of their entire genetic code, returning them to the perfection that you intended at their creation. And now, Lord, I declare over them, Proverbs 17, 22, that a cheerful heart is good medicine. And I bless you now, each and every one of you, with an abundant spirit of joy that brings healing and restoration. Amen. I want to tell you that no matter how many generations of trauma are in your life, trauma from abuse, trauma from pornography, trauma from alcoholism, trauma from infirmity, it stops with you. It is finished. Life can seem to glide by in a monotonous rhythm of daily activities. You wake, you shower, you dress, you take care of others and make sure they have all they need, you commute to work, you work hard for eight hours, maybe nine, maybe ten, you commute back home, you cook dinner, you watch some television, you go to bed. It's the same predictable cycle, day after day, month after month, year after year. You wonder, is this all there is to life? The truth is that change is available. There is a greater purpose for your life, something only you can do. There's a plan, a guiding map that has been there since before you were even born. 
There's a path that was created for you which you alone can take. Day by day, hour by hour, if you choose to pursue it, your destiny will be revealed. The invitation is there. Will you discover all that life has for you? Do you want to find out what you were truly created for? Do you want more? Are you hungry to discover your purpose? We would love to provide you with a powerful book that will show you the way. Get a free online download of the book, They Thought for Themselves, by logging onto the website, theythoughtforthemselves.com. Next week on It's Supernatural. So many questions as the world looks on at Israel right now. You may be asking, why all the fuss? Why is it so important? And what does it have to do with me? Join me for a very special It's Supernatural program and get answers to these questions and many more.